You know how they normally say PC Master Race? Well, that can also now mean Planet Coaster Master Race, because Planet Coaster is the master race of theme park building games. <laughs> Was starting this episode with a terrible joke a good idea? Probably not, but that's what I do best, so I'm gonna go with it. Anyways, welcome back to Let's Build the Ultimate Theme Park and Planet Coaster. My name is, of course, Tyler Cedarwall, and last episode, we got fairly close to finishing our first coaster in the park. We did lots of lighting effects, really made this laboratory look very ambient with the lighting, these sirens going off whenever the coaster comes through. And now our goal is to use these effects such as fire, explosions, sparks, and all of those sorts of things to really add the effect that this laboratory is going to explode right before we escape. Now in the scenery, we have tons of different options for different particle effects. We have smoke, we have sparks, we have fire, we have explosions, and there are so many different things that we can do with all of these. Now with the sparks, we can put them inside the machinery to make it seem like the machinery, air conditioner units, generators are short circuiting and are about to explode. We can add smoke and fire to items to make it seem like things are on fire. And then we can add explosions just to make it look like stuff is blowing up right in front of our face. And adding all these effects is really what brings the cinematic experience to this ride and makes it look so much cooler than it already is. Now, I said last episode that it would take two more full episodes to finish this coaster, but I decided that I would edit it down a little bit, get rid of some of the unnecessary things that we don't need to see, and make it so we finish this coaster this episode, so we can continue moving on and building more things in this park. Now, I didn't cut out anything important from the episode. The main thing I cut out that took a lot of time was adding the sound effects to the ride, which I'll still show a little bit, but all I did was build a speaker in somewhere in the laboratory, assign a sound effect to it, and then have it go off at a certain trigger point along the track. Now one of my favorite particle effects I like to add to the ride is just steam, just to add an ambience to the ride to make it seem like you're going through a laboratory with smoke and steam in the air. It really makes it look just a lot more lifelike. Another thing we can do to make it just a lot more epic is the particle effects. You can have them triggered at certain points, just like the lights and the sound effects. So whenever the guests reach a certain part along the track, we can have an explosion go off to freak them out. That way they actually feel like the laboratory is blowing up around them. I also love how these robots look like they're trying to fix everything before it explodes, but they are doing a very terrible job at that. All right, now moving right along, the next thing I wanna work on is this big vertical section of the coaster outside. Right now, it looks pretty wimpy, so I decided that we're gonna add some really massive supports to really beef it up and make it look like it's not being held up by just skinny little bars all the way to the top. So I used these metal support beams to really outline and kind of just traced this whole entire loop and just made it look like it was being held up by a gigantic kind of interlacing metal structure that seems like it's very strong and sturdy. That way it doesn't look like this thing will fall over when there's just a slight breeze. Well, it would probably take more than a slight breeze, but if it was a very windy day, right now it looks like it'd be pretty scary to be all the way up there. But with these new beams, we can make it look very strong. Now this is our first layer, but we're gonna stack it up a bit more. And then I also wanted to add some lights to this thing to make it look really nice as well. Some triggerable lights that light up as the coaster goes all the way to the top and all the way to the bottom. But we'll wait and do that in a second once we have this thing built. Now I want to take a quick second and actually thank Planet Coaster, whoever is behind their social media account, for the shout out that they gave this series on Twitter and Facebook. I am very grateful for that promotion. Thank you so much. I hope you're watching the series right now. That would actually mean a lot to me. I hope you're enjoying the series and I hope I can continue doing enough to impress you to possibly promote it in the future. But that, I thought that was a pretty awesome thing that they did. And like I said, this the community behind this game and behind the development team is just outstanding. I've never seen a better community behind a video game before. I'm sure there is, but I just personally haven't seen it. Now that the structure is looking pretty nice, just doing a few finishing touches, now we're gonna work on the lights. So the first thing I had to do was just light it up uniformly. It took me a second to figure out how I wanted to put the lights on here because I didn't want to seem like there was too many lights on it because it would just look a bit overbearing because at first it just seemed like there was just too much light and it didn't even look cool at all. But eventually I kind of switched it up, I deleted some and kind of put them a bit more spaced out because they just didn't look good when they were all close together like that. It didn't make the tower look the way I was wanting it to look. 
Fortunately, whenever you see something that you don't like, you can just use the really easy moving tools to just move things around on the, whatever axis it's on. So if you just need to move it down a little bit, you just pull on the down arrow and it moves it. And it's nice because I'm actually just getting more and more familiar with the building tools in this game. In a few more episodes, I finally discovered that <laughs> there's a button that allows you to duplicate something and it just recreates that object in the same exact place as the one you duplicated it as and you can move it around with the move tools and that allows me to do a lot more that I didn't know I could do already and it just helped to make building so much easier. Now for the colors on these lights that will turn on and off as the coaster goes up this gigantic loop, if you can even call it a loop, I made them red, white, and blue because I thought it might be kind of cool to <coughs> name this coaster after something more American themes like American Voyager or something along those lines. I'm gonna leave the naming up to you guys once this coaster is finished, but I just thought it would be cool to do like a red, white, and blue theme. I don't know, just those, those colors like really well together and I just couldn't think of another color scheme that gave off the vibe that I wanted this coaster to have. So that's kind of what I ended up going with. And also I wanna take a couple seconds to mention the music slash ambience in the background. I kind of started getting bored of having the Planet Coaster soundtrack in the background of every episode. Not because I dislike it, but because I felt like the music didn't always fit the theming for the episode. So I decided to put some sci-fi ambience in the background and I'll link to the video I got it from in the description because it actually sounds really good and I wanted the music to kind of fit more what I was building. So from now on if I'm working on like a sci-fi roller coaster, I'll use sci-fi ambience to really give the overall feel I'm going for. I'm trying to make the series better and better as time goes on. And now as you can see, I'm making these lights triggerable. So as the coaster goes up the incline, these lights turn on and as it goes down, the rest of the lights are going to turn on. And I want to commend the developers so much on these triggerable items because they are just so intuitive and so easy to implement into your coaster and just fine tune. If the timing is off on something, all you have to do is drag around the number that that item is associated with on the track, forwards or backwards, just to put it forward or back in time. It's just so easy and the timing is just, uh, it's just so good. I just can't get enough of it. The Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 had some triggerable items, but not much. The only triggerable items were gigantic, massive, kind of predetermined pieces of scenery. Like, they had a Jaws piece of scenery that you could have activate on a piece of the track and like the Jaws shark would come up. Or they'd have like a volcano that would erupt or an oil rig that would start shooting that oil. But there wasn't much variety when it came to that. So I'm glad they added a lot more variety when it came to having items being triggered on certain points of your ride. Because... Because if they keep on adding items like that to this game, there's just going to be unlimited possibilities with things you can do on your rides. And this game is just going to continue to be one of the best games ever made in my opinion. But now that we've finished beefing up the supports outside and adding those lights to make everything look nice outdoors, we're going to head back on indoors and decorate the loading station. So of course we wanted to make it super sci-fi themed. So I just continue doing what I do best, placing tons of sci-fi stuff everywhere and just making it look as cool as possible. I love this little piece of trim with all of these little blue and red dots. First off, it goes along with the lighting that's on those supports outside. And second off, it just looks really small and detailed and I like really small intricate looking pieces of scenery and it definitely gives that vibe. I also like this guy just running this coaster. He's just doing his job and loving every second of it. All the employees in this game love their jobs. Even when you're playing story mode, I think if you're playing sandbox mode too even, if you don't pay your employees enough and don't train them enough, then they'll actually get mad and quit. Even though they look like they're having a great time, they'll still get really salty if you give them crappy pay and they'll quit because they're like, I'm not gonna act this happy for free if you know what I'm saying. I'm gonna play some vents on the ceiling for some ventilation. I guess that's what vents do, they ventilate things. True and we're just gonna keep on adding lights. Now I do wanna take another second. I always like, I kind of like talk about the game for a second and then I'll go off on like some random tangent on something related to the series. I wanna take a second and apologize that the series is not as frequent as I would like. I'm just really busy and it kinda of sounds like, like I'm making excuses, but I am really busy. As I've mentioned before, I am a full-time student in college. I'm taking physics and calculus two right now which are two of the hardest classes I've ever taken. Last week I had a test in each each of my classes because for some reason professors think it's really fun to have all their tests on the same week for whatever reason. And it just really bogged me down. And then plus I had work, I'm a server, and I also have a graphic design job at the same restaurant I serve at. So I'm doing a lot of that type of stuff. 
and then I'm on a dance team as well. So I am fairly busy, but I still love working on this series. Like every single day I'm like, dang, I really want to work on this series, but I need to do homework and I have this internal conflict and it's just a mess. But whenever I'm working on this series, I just love every second of it, whether I'm building or commentating or editing. It's just a good time. I'm just really enjoying this series and I'm glad I'm working on a YouTube series. It's kind of like taking a break. It's like I'm, I work on this series as like for fun. But yeah, this room is really coming together. As you see, I put a lot of scenery in here because I really wanted the guests to just enjoy every second of this ride. Even when they're walking or standing in line to get on the ride, I want them to just be able to look around and be like, this is a cool environment. This is a really fun place to be. Although I will admit, by the time I got to this very last room, I was starting to get kind of tired of decorating the indoor section of this coaster. I had put in a lot of work and detail and I'm like, all right, let's just, this is the last room, let's just kind of fill it up. So I just kind of used some of the items that I hadn't used yet, still added some cool lighting. And still, I still put in time, but I was starting to get kind of over it, as you might imagine. You guys are probably already kind of over me decorating this ride too, which is why I decided to make sure that we finished it up in this episode, so you guys don't leave me thinking that I'll never get to any other ride in this park. The sad thing is, I end up putting even more work into the next roller coaster. Like, this roller coaster is lame in comparison to the coaster we build after this, in my own personal opinion. So, yeah. Also, back to a side note about the background music or ambience for this episode, but let me know what you think about it. If you guys think it's too boring, I'll try to find something else, or if you want to leave some ideas of music I can play in the background, um, that would be awesome, as long as there's no copyright, and as long as there's no vocals. I don't want to play anything with vocals. Somebody left a comment of another type of music I could put in the background of this band that performed at MAGFest, but it had vocals. I think they were also rock vocals, so they definitely would clash with commentary. So it needs to easily go along with the commentary and also no copyright. But I would like to mix up the background music between episodes just to kind of give you some more variety. But I think this ambience is kind of nice, it's very chill. It has like a more laid back feel. That's something I want to go with with this series is I want the series to be a good laid back series. Not like the type of series that you have to pay like overt attention to, even though I feel like if you pay overt attention to the series it's better because I do talk about a lot of different things and a lot is going on. And on the screen at all times so there is definitely enough to keep you occupied but at the same time I like it to be some good like background entertainment as well for people who just want to have something to watch while they're maybe drawing or working on homework or playing video games or whatever you might do in your spare time. The next thing I want to talk about is a comment that somebody left that gave me an idea for that rainbow tunnel at the end of the laboratory for whenever the coaster is shooting out of the laboratory. And they said that it would look cool if I made it look like this rainbow effect that was in Space Quest 4 at the beginning of the game. And so I looked up the beginning of the game and scrolled through the game until I found the part they were talking about. And their idea was actually really cool and it gave me some more ideas on what I could do with that. So in the future, I'll probably actually kind of play with that rainbow tunnel and try to make it look even better. I think it looks pretty cool now, but I agree that I could probably make it even look more dope than it is right now. But for right now, it's going to stay as it is because, as I said, I didn't go back and start changing stuff until later on in the future. And now, I'm just kind of decorating the entrance and exit to this ride. This is the exit section for whenever the guests get off the ride. I didn't spend much time decorating this section, but I still put in a fair chunk of time just making sure even the exit section looked well because I just wanted every single square foot of this ride to look like it was polished to the extreme, so that's exactly what I did. And I think it turned out really nice as well. I think almost everything in this ride turned out exactly as I envisioned, which makes me happy. It makes me happy you can build rides in this ride and have them exceed your expectations of how they'll look. But with that last section of the interior decorated, I believe we have entirely decorated the entire interior of this coaster. So now it's time to finish decorating the outside of this building because the outside also matters. It's not going to take us nearly as much time, but we're still going to put in a few minutes just to make everything look nice. So I started by putting a pond by the big launch section of this coaster. You can see me doing lots of the terrain tools, the textures they have in this game look super good. I, especially the stone texture. I feel like even though it's a flat texture, it makes the grounds actually look more three-dimensional and more detailed. Now rocks in this game are actually one of my favorite pieces of scenery they've ever added to Roller Coaster Tycoon because with these rocks you can really just intersect them and make tons of just awesome looking just rock slides or 
whatever you would like to make. You just have to use your imagination, but it's really nice to be able to tie things in with rocks because for some reason they just really help tie things together. And I guess rocks are kind of just formed everywhere and sometimes it's just nice to make it look like, eh, this rock was too big to move, so we didn't move it. We just kind of left it where it was. Now we're just placing trees, bushes, foliage, all of that sort of thing, just to add some life and some green to the outside of this ride. Because you know what? Trees make everything look nicer, and so do bushes. I'm not sure what it is about them, but it's just kind of cool that there's a natural growing substance on this earth that just naturally decorates the environment. Isn't that, isn't that kind of awesome? We live on an awesome earth. What is this random tangent I'm getting about? Also, these red maple trees look great. They look fantastic. Have they been working out? Have you been working out with maple trees? You're looking good. Nah. And now we're kind of adding some trim to the building just to kind of spicing it up, not make it look as flat. I'm kind of underwhelmed with the decorating I did on the outside of this building. I might go back and add some more later, but I think towards the end of this ride, I was just kind of over it in a way. I mean, I still enjoy the the creation of this ride but after working on one thing for a long period of time you just get a little bit tired you want a break from that ride so eventually as I said after I build stuff and get more ideas from you guys I'll go back and change a few things and especially if I relook at this building with some fresh new inspiration in the future I can make it look even better and that is kind of overall what we're going for right I believe so also I do want to make a small apology. For some reason, for a few episodes, I recorded the series in 720p instead of 1080p. Um, it was a complete accident. I don't know. I think I was recording something else with XSplit because I recorded the series with XSplit. I think I recorded something else and then I forgot to change the settings back. So that's why it's in 720p. But I realized I was recording in 720p and then changed it later. Not like it matters too much, but I still want to make these as high as quality as possible, as high as quality as my computer can handle at least. But now I want to decorate the line for this ride in the outdoor section. So I'm not going to do too much. I'm going to kind of go with a more natural look. For the entrance of the sci-fi area, I'm kind of starting with a more green and more natural look. And as we get further in, I'll make it look even more sci-fi-esque. But I wanted there to be like a nice transition. I didn't want there to be just a huge, just like random, okay, you're in a normal generic type of park and then all of a sudden, BAM! You're in the middle of freaking space. What you gonna do about it? Now I wanted to have like a nice flow, a nice transition because I think that's important with a theme park. You don't want it to be too abrupt. And it's kind of insane how much work there is to do on each separate ride in this game. Cause I remember just like building the coaster. I'm like, all right, now I gotta build the building. Now I gotta decorate the inside. Now I gotta add trigger events. Now I gotta decorate the station. Now I gotta decorate the outside of the building. Now I gotta decorate the line, the entrance, the exit, the terrain. It just, it was, there's so much. And it was actually kind of unexpected how much actual work goes into every single different aspect of a ride if you really wanna decorate it well. Something I'm gonna do later on in the future for different rides is I'm not gonna do the ride all in one go. I'm gonna build like say a third of the ride and then I'll take an episode to work on something else for a little bit just to give a breather and then I'll spend like an episode or two longer on the ride and then I'll work on something else for an episode and then I'll finish up the ride in the last section just so you can get a break from one specific ride. Now for this ride in particular I wanted to just like plow through and just finish it all the way up just so we would have at least one finished ride in this theme park. But for the next one it actually took longer to build than this ride so I kind of did what I just said I work on it for a few episodes take a break work on something else and then go back to it then work on something else go back to it that way you don't see all of the same thing in one episode and get a bit more variety with each episode and I also need a little bit of variety when building because it can kind of get tiresome to work on the same ride for just one straight period I'm sure you guys understand but now also there's the lighting outdoors, you can't forget the lighting. Once you build something during the daytime, you gotta make sure it looks fantastic during the nighttime too. Something else I wanna add in the future is I want us to add some lights to the end of this coaster that light up as that coaster is going along the very outside curve. And now actually we're done with pretty much all the construction on this ride. The last thing I went ahead and did was add sound effects. I'm not gonna show the whole entire process for this because as I said earlier, it's just me placing speakers and adding sound effects to them. But I wanted to show you guys sort of what it was like. And then before we end this episode off, we will ride this completed coaster just so you guys can see what it is like. And I won't even talk, I'll just kind of let you take in the ambience. Even though I didn't record sound, I'm sorry, but I will turn up the background ambience for it as we end off this episode. But 
with that, I think we have this coaster finished. So thank you all so much for watching the building process of this very first coaster. In the next episode, we will continue building and start building our next major ride, which I am super excited for you guys to see. All right, well, thank you guys all for watching, and I will see you all in the next episode.